What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. And if you're sick with anything else, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, May 3rd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, Welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Want to learn more? Want to stay informed? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like the content you see today? Give this video a thumbs up. The more thumbs up we get, the more YouTube pushes this content out through the algorithm. Let's try for 100 thumbs up today. And if you have a comment, leave the comment down below. Let's try for 30 of those, and of course share this with anyone you know. Today we're going to take a look at a few news stories, just three, and the third one will include some of the latest symptoms of COVID with the newer variants that's going on, you know, these flirt variants which we talk about nowadays, and then we're going to take a look at some of the daily data, weekly CDC data, which includes updates on various different metrics in the United States. Then we'll look at New Jersey, New York, California, and Los Angeles as well. Starting off today, just going to read a headline here. You can read the full article because I did tweet it out at COVID Data Report. That is my Twitter account, and I will make sure this gets onto my website, datareport.info. Measles outbreak kills at least 42 people in northeast Nigeria. Yikes, that's not good. We've been talking about measles all around the world and around the U.S. this year, and measles cases are up this year. It's something that is rather concerning. Then we come over to this, a new study. Long COVID symptoms in children vary by age. So what this finds is that... Um, you know, maybe school-age children, you know, elementary school, maybe let's just say from kindergarten through fifth grade, they see one set of symptoms in long COVID. And then you get the middle school age and then high school age children. They're seeing a completely different range in symptoms. It is really varying by age. And some of the symptoms, well, let's read some of this. According to the findings, school-age children Adolescents and young adults with a history of COVID-19 infection had many prolonged symptoms in common, including low energy, tiring after walking, headaches, body, muscle and joint pain, lightheadedness, dizziness, or trouble concentrating or focusing. And we're going to stop right there. Trouble concentrating and focusing. That's a long COVID symptom that they're seeing in the younger ages. That's not a good thing. If you want your child to have a proper education, like they should, and you want them to get good grades in school, you're going to have to do one big thing, and hopefully it's not too late. You're going to have to help them avoid COVID infection as much as possible. Why? Because if they get long COVID, guess what? That can really hurt their ability to get a proper education and learn and function with day-to-day -day school activities. I mean, long COVID, it can really bring their test scores down. Why? Because, well, you just saw some of those symptoms, like dizziness and lack of energy. If a child's constantly tired in school, they're not going to be able to stay focused. And not being able to stay focused is a symptom of long COVID in the younger kids. If you want to read this full story, we're not going to read the rest of this. If you want to read this, I did tweet this out. Now we have to get to something else that's rather important as well. Two new COVID variants called FLIRT are spreading in the U.S. What are the symptoms? There's actually several FLIRT variants. It's, those are some of those uh, new variants that I've showed you on the CDC page. Now, the CDC page didn't update for variants today. That'll be next week, but KP.2, that is one of them. And let's just read what they say some of the uh, symptoms are. And for the most part, they are similar to what we have been seeing before. The symptoms of the FLIRT variants are similar to those caused by JN.1, which include sore throat, cough, fatigue, congestion, runny nose, headache, muscle ache, fevers or chills, new loss of sense of taste or smell, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, nauseous or vomiting, and diarrhea. If you feel you have any of those symptoms, please do not hesitate 
to take one of these rapid at-home COVID tests. I always leave this little box nearby, which has been used. I just leave it because I like to show it to you as a reminder that, hey, you do need to test. Now, we did read a study yesterday that said those who are of high risk, these at-home tests, which I'm showing you right here. Here's a box. Here's what a box of at-home tests would look like. Um, they're not as effective for those with high risk. It is better that you get a PCR test. And it's not so much that they're not as effective. Um, if you want a more definitive answer, a better yes or no, because sometimes people get sick and they show up negative on a rapid test two, three times, and then finally a few days later on the fourth time, oh, hello, you do have COVID. Get a PCR test. PCR test is a bit better. Now, even that's not perfect. Sometimes you'll get a false negative there, but a PCR test will give you a better understanding as to whether or not you have COVID. But mind you, so many insurance companies do not cover it. You have to pay out of pocket. It's expensive. It's not easy to do. If you're lucky enough to be able to have coverage for a PCR test, I recommend you go and do that. Nothing really to show you on the website today. Drum roll, please. I have to refresh this. This is today's pollen outlook. Take a look at this. We're down to just 30% of the country being in a medium to high status, and I think we're going to float below 50 for some time, 50% for some time, because it's going to be a relatively wet pattern for many, but that wet pattern hasn't set in in the Northeast yet, and you can see here, the majority of the Northeast is in red for high pollen levels, and then you go to the plains, up into the upper Midwest, you do see some red there for pollen as well. In between, you can see where that wet pattern has already started, Louisiana, portions of Alabama, Mississippi, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, into portions of the Ohio Valley. When you get rain in the atmosphere, it cleanses the atmosphere of those pollen levels, so therefore your levels are lower, and a few moderate spots on the west coast, but not terrible. Let's take a look at the air quality values across the United States. I will zoom this out, and you can see here, areas east of where that rain is, you can see there are some yellows and some oranges that are showing up, so that is rather concerning. I mean, it's not terribly concerning. Let's exit this. But you can see here, there are some yellows across the Appalachian Mountains. So, yes, there are some areas with some minor air quality problems. Then when we come down to Texas, just some minor problems. And not all too bad on the West Coast, just our normal hot spots in California. Philadelphia yesterday. Yet again, another 847 EMS incidents. It's been hanging. It's been staying over 800. I'm confident today could possibly be lower. We're not 90 degrees today. Yesterday was 90 degrees, but we'll have to see. That was four days in a row over 800, with one of those days being over 900 EMS calls. Let's do a live look in at what's going on in Montgomery County, and eh, there's quite a few calls for 6 o'clock at night. Alter mental status, cardiac emergency, accident, cardiac emergency, fall victim, head injury, respiratory emergency. You're seeing the word emergency quite a bit. You're also seeing accident quite a bit. It's Friday night. A lot of traffic that does cause accidents. Wow. Chester County, Pennsylvania, for this time in the evening, is very busy. Take a look at this. Wow. And we do see injured persons several times. Respiratory difficulty multiple times. Hypotension. Back pain. Just a array of different things. Some could possibly be COVID. Many of them probably not, like back pain, injury, falls. Hey, if when you're positive for COVID, you can get dizzy. When you get dizzy, you can fall down. So, hey, yep. You never know. Uh, take a look at Walgreens for this week. 12.6% positivity rate. The prior week was 13%. Difference of down, 0.4%. Taking a look now, drum roll please. And we do need to refresh this. This particular page, I did not have refreshed. But here is the new wastewater data in from the CDC. And wow, I'm seeing some good news. Now we'll do a full wastewater update on Sunday. But I do want to make you aware of one thing and one thing only there's just one site that is 80 to 100 percent COVID detected hopefully we can say that hopefully we can get that to zero next week i'm confident we might be able to but i'm thinking orange and maybe light blue sites those moderate levels with orange being moderate to high i'm thinking we may see that back off a little bit and maybe uh go upward a little bit in localized areas just because of these flirt uh, variants that I'm talking about. 
All right, moving on. Let's take a look at current wastewater levels across the country. We can see here Oklahoma, for whatever reason, is now back to high levels of COVID in wastewater again. That's concerning. Why is that concerning? Because, well, Oklahoma tends to have the highest long COVID rate in the country. So, yet again, another wave of people in high numbers in Oklahoma are going to go on to develop long COVID. That's relatively concerning. And the fact that there's nowhere surrounding there that is really in moderate, it's just minimal to low levels, uh, that's interesting. So we're going to have to maybe do some investigation. Of course, being in Oklahoma, there's not going to be much data, but uh, maybe there's a new variant of its own popping up there. You don't know. When you see surrounding states that are still relatively low, but then one in between that's randomly high, you got to wonder what's going on. And also, I'm noticing here, Hawaii now has gone to the high levels for wastewater as well. We're not going to take a look at any wastewater scan sites today. Maybe we will tomorrow. We will take a look at the national hospital capacity that uh, hopefully updated this week. 74.9% of all inpatient beds are being used in the United States. 0.7% for COVID. 0.3% for influenza. We come down to ICU usage. We do see 69.2% is being used, which is not bad. 0.6% for COVID and 0.4% for influenza. Moving on now to hospital admissions for this week. COVID-19 hospital admissions in the past week, 5,098. That is down from last week's number. It is down by 11.1%, but it's not down as much. And I think we could see this get to where it starts to level off to even, and then maybe we bounce around for a few weeks just with these new strains of COVID going around. Um, it could cause an increase in some areas, why some other areas don't increase. So that mixture, that could be what causes this number to hold stay. I do think it may go below 5,000 next week, but we'll have to see what happens with that going forward. Uh, nothing else here that we want to look at. We'll look at some more stuff with this over the weekend, when it tends to be slower news periods. Positivity rate in the United States, it's 3%, down by 0.1%. And taking a look at this, when we take a look at epidemic stats, let's start off with COVID first. It's likely growing once again in Texas. Everywhere else is stable or uncertain, likely declining or declining, or it's just simply not estimated. And influenza epidemic status, it is likely growing in Arizona this week. Stable or uncertain, likely declining, declining or not estimated in the rest of the United States. So overall, not terrible for that. Again, the variants did not update this week, but I do want to show you KP.2, which is at 24.9%. That's one of those, quote, flirt variants, and there's some others on here as well. JN.1 is not one of them, but uh, JN.1 is at 22%. JN.1.7 is at 13.7%. JN.1.13.1 at 8.8%. KP.1.1 at 7.5%, and so on. You see here, there's quite a few variants. We're back in variant soup once again taking a look at this week's influenza update the only place that is even close to moderate would be considered up in north dakota and again in alaska but they're all in low levels the entire united states is either low or minimal for flu activity at this time new jersey today 188 hospitalizations 65 out of 70 hospitals reporting i suspect there could be a backlog that gets dumped at some point because they didn't report yesterday just four people on a ventilator that's a really low number patients in the icu 24 so yeah not doing too bad in new jersey at this point 23 discharges new york state 552 people have tested positive in the last 24 hours taking a look at new york state hospitalizations they did go up slightly today so we didn't get below 400 i'm still hoping we could but in new york state but Eh, we'll have to see. They may go up a little bit more next week. 435 people in the hospital, 40 people in the ICU. I mean, they're not really going up a lot. They're not really dropping a lot. They're just bouncing off the bottom, and I think that's going to continue for a few weeks. We'll just have to see what happens next week. Again, with this KP.2, it could cause somewhat of a small rise in some places in localized areas in the United States. All right, California. Hospitalization, first off, this is Los Angeles. Hospitalizations in Los Angeles have actually gone up ever so slightly back to end uh, the month of 
April, but as you can see here, this data, it is pretty far behind. Deaths, they went up ever so slightly. Cases were dropping, and testing was down as well. The positivity rate did drop, and California itself, they don't track hospitalizations anymore because it's not listed here. You can see here, COVID deaths are down by 0.5%. I wish they would give the exact number of how many COVID deaths they had in the past week. The positivity rate for COVID actually went up by 0.3%. It's at 2.3% in California. Influenza positivity rate is 4.1%. That's down by 0.6%. And influenza deaths actually went up by 0.1% in the past week, but their deaths for influenza right now are relatively low. All right, that does it for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have Pandemic Updates throughout the week, and we'll have tomorrow's update, and then we'll have our Wastewater Bonanza on Sunday. I hope you stick around and uh, come check it out this weekend. And of course, if you liked what you saw here today, maybe you're thinking, you know what, maybe I need to start watching this more often just to know what's going on. Hey, subscribe down below. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. Again, let's try for 100 likes today and see what that does and of course if you have something to say leave it down below and share it this video with anyone you know i will see you all again tomorrow until i see you again tomorrow stay safe have a fantastic weekend and of course thanks for watching see you all again next time